At some time in your life, you might need to make an emergency call using 911. If that happens, you might be scared or nervous or upset. That's why it's good to be prepared. This video will show you how a 911 call is your chance to ask for the help and accommodations you need. You'll learn what to do when you call 911 and what to expect while you're on the phone. Everybody's different and may need something different to communicate effectively. So think about it from the perspective of the responder, the 911 operator. They need to know exactly what you need to communicate effectively and they're going to relay that to the responder. There are many different options that you can request when speaking to the 911 operator, including turning sirens off and flashing lights as you approach the house, speaking slowly, using simple vocabulary, talking louder or talking softer, making direct eye contact or not. There are lots of different options. You have to consider what works best for you and then be able to speak up for yourself and say that so that they know what you need. Connor Cummings had a real-life emergency when his mother hurt herself and fainted. He and his mom show the steps he followed, so you'll know what to do too. So we were in the basement, I fainted, came upstairs and called 911, and he followed the plan. 911, where is your emergency? I live at 5555 Belize Street, Fairfax, Virginia, and then Union Townhouse. What's going on? Tell me exactly what happened. My mom needs help. She got, she got hurt by a big wood piece falling off her wall, and she fell to the floor and fainted. We had a plan written for him that talks about what he needs to do when he calls 911, opens the door, does all of his things. He was able to do it because we had a plan. I was in tears with pride for with him. It's now, it is something that we go and I share with families so that they will do the same because that's how important I think it is. 911 calls are answered by operators trained to ask for and get the information needed for police, fire, and emergency medical responders. You can be ready for the call if you have a written script with important information on it. Have a 911 script handy at home, maybe by your phone, and that would include the number to dial 911. It would also, most importantly, include your address, your phone number, a little bit about yourself to include maybe your disability, and maybe some information about your household members. If someone has a uh, history of chest pains or heart problems, it's always helpful to have that information too. There are a few things to keep in mind if you have to call 911. When Connor called, he called from a landline phone. He had his 911 script near the phone so he could read it. He gave his address right away. He talked calmly, even though he felt nervous. He stayed on the line and answered questions from the 911 operator. Here's more from Michelle Anderson. Please use the phone that you're most comfortable with, if that's your house phone or your cell phone. Keep in mind that when you're calling from your house phone, we have a better address. We always suggest and recommend that you call 911, but if you're unable to, you can always text to us. We do not get images or photos at this time, but our call takers are set up to take your text call also. In the 911 center and the call center, we handle each call with the utmost care. We ask a lot of questions because we're gathering as much information as we can. We want those first responders to know as much as possible when they arrive to help you. Another key thing to keep in mind is while we are talking and I am asking you questions, help is on the way. So I don't want you to ever think that there is a delay or a response while we are talking and I'm asking questions. Uh, the other key things to remember when calling 911 is to remain calm. Do not hang up until we give you permission to do so. Sometimes with certain calls, we will stay on the phone until help is with you. Answer. Answer. For some people, talking Answer. to a 911 operator is impossible. Answer. Ben uses a letter board to spell words to communicate with others. When you call and maybe you're not able to talk clearly, we're going to continue to stay on the phone and probably ask you the same questions maybe several times, seeing if we can pick up a little bit more. We can also, and have in the past, ask yes, no questions to solicit some type of a response, or even using the keypad to ask a question and you can press a key for yes. If we believe you're in crisis or that there is an emergency 
or maybe we can't get the full information, we're going to start somebody out to your house to check on you. Emergencies can happen anywhere. Nesha called 911 from her car when her son's behavior became unmanageable and dangerous. And, and part of the challenge was in that type of situation, I didn't necessarily, um, you know, I felt flustered and and it was hard to, as a, even as a parent, be able to communicate effectively when you're struggling with your own sense of emotion. Everyone who calls is as nervous or is nervous in some fashion. Um, maybe it's their first time calling. Maybe what they're seeing and experiencing is scary. Um, so we'll give you prompts to take a deep breath, maybe slow down what you're saying but everybody gets nervous and we're trained to work with that. When the police arrived to help Nesha, they already had a good idea of what to expect because of what she told the 911 operator. They were definitely prepped with, you know, knowing, you know, the nature of the situation. I also had um, asked for um, a CIT certified, crisis intervention team certified um, professionals just to make sure that they were well equipped, you know, to be able to handle, handle that type of situation. So I did ask for that in advance. Nesha's call was one in a broad range of calls 911 operators receive every day. Uh, we deal with all types of people that call. We deal with uh, young children, with elderly people who are maybe confused. We deal with people with disabilities. We deal with people that are in crisis. So we just want you to know that we are going to handle your call with the utmost care. So be patient and stay on the phone and answer all of our questions. And by the way, Here's something you might need to know if you're practicing your 911 plans. People do call 911 by accident. Sometimes um, it's somebody playing with the phone. Sometimes it's just a misdial. If you call 911 by accident, please just remain on the phone and tell us it's an accident. There are additional things you can do to prepare in advance. You can visit your local police department and fire department. You can set up a profile with your police department. You can uh, set up emergency contacts in your phone, and if you don't know how to do that, you can ask somebody who can help you. Remember, the help you need will be unique to you. It is really important that you be prepared and that you practice. Visit the ARC of Northern Virginia's website for more tips on 911 calls and other public safety concerns for people with disabilities. Get fact sheets, disability identification cards, and more videos like this one. The Mid-Atlantic ADA Center's website has information, guidance, and training on the Americans with Disabilities Act. We encourage you to get in touch with your local police or sheriff's department to ask questions and share information about yourself and family members with disabilities.